Okay, another absolute freebie, but probably the biggest performance enhancing drug, if it was such a thing, on the planet. We all know about all kinds of performance enhancing drugs, yet we don't focus on this one. I'm an Olympic marathon runner, I run 209 for the marathon, and I'm giving you five performance enhancing tips that you can start to incorporate into your training at home. Drum roll. So my first tip is hydration. This is so, so important. Let me get through some of the boring bits first. If you're dehydrated, it decreases your endurance. It's a known fact, it's a published fact. And so what happens is when the muscles are dehydrated and the body is slightly dehydrated, you have to work harder to achieve the same results that you could have achieved had you been hydrated. It increases the chance of injury because of muscle cramps. And so when the muscles aren't functioning as well, they cramp up, you can end up with injuries that you didn't need because of a cramp or because you weren't drinking enough water. Also, it increases fatigue. So just like the first point, you're working that bit harder, but that means that you carry a higher fatigue into the next day, into the next training cycle, into the next week, and this increases the chances of injury and overall tiredness or overtraining massively. Now, how do we fix it? It's so simple, but we all do a terrible job of doing it. Drink more water, wake up. The first thing you should do in the morning, that's why it's our first topic today. Go downstairs, pour a glass of water, get two pinches of salt, drop it in, that's your electrolytes. You've started the day with that intention to work on your hydration. Then go for your run. If you're doing a longer run, bring some water with you. If it's hot, bring some water with you. When you come back, have a drink of water. Then throughout the day, even if you have to set reminders on your phone, remember to hydrate during the day. Daily hydration is an ongoing battle. Every single day, you don't ever win. You win the day. Get on top of your hydration, see the benefits. It's gonna move your training and fitness forward a lot. Decrease injury and help you stay consistent with your training. Okay, another absolute freebie, but probably the biggest performance enhancing drug, if it was such a thing, on the planet. We all know about all kinds of performance enhancing drugs, yet we don't focus on this one. Sleep. Get on top of your sleep. Quality, number of hours. When you're struggling for sleep, it is literally, there are studies, Google it, 30% lower performance on things like vertical jump, running performance, and you need to get on top of sleep. Close the laptop at 9 p.m., put on your reading glasses, do some reading, do some meditation, perhaps journal, some gratitude journal has been shown to help improve sleep quality, have a nighttime tea, add this into your routine, close down the laptop, stop thinking about what else could help, and go to bed. You need at least seven hours, preferably nine hours of sleep a night. I know it's difficult with full-time employment and work, but stop <laughs> thinking that all these other things are gonna help your training. Stop spending money on all these other things and go to bed. Recovery strategies. And that's the third tip today. That's the third thing that's gonna help move your training forward. And it's so, so important. I tried to make the Olympics in 2016. I was greedy, I trained too hard, I pushed too hard, I wasn't doing anything for recovery. It's like I just assumed that my body would take care of it itself. What you need to do is start to add in every time you push and you beat that body down, the only way to absorb that training is to recover. Work on those parts of your body that you know you beat up. Don't keep shortening the muscles, help them. Stretch, foam roll. What about some self-massage? What about an Epsom bath? What about an ice bath later on in the day? Great for discipline, cold, but bloody brilliant. Great for recovery. What about some meditation? What about helping your psychology recover? 
What are you doing to help your psychology recover? The next time that you lose motivation and you don't want to train, what if it was because your psychology got tired? You know, when, at work, when the computer stops working, you switch it off and you switch it back on, you reboot it, it works. Start to help the psychology. I've added a link in the description to my website, joggingroom.com. There is a link to free self-massage, foam rolling, all this kind of stuff that you can do at home, little routines, so there's no excuse. You know what to do, the routines are there, they're free. Check them out. The, yeah, open that, open that body up, couple of back rotations, open up the subscaps, and this is all for the breathing. There you go, big deep breath, push the diaphragm down, big deep breath, push the diaphragm down. Okay, so how I got from 217.55 in London in 2017, I literally went 217, 215, 215, 30, 211.52, 209.48. It was the smoothest few years of my career. It was beautiful. After every race, I wrote a list of things I did well and things I perhaps didn't do well. Things I needed to work on, things I could improve. Sometimes it was recovery, but honestly, sometimes it was, hey, if I wanna get better in the next four to five weeks, don't think about altitude, don't think about warm weather training, don't think about all these fancy things. What about focusing on my nutrition, focusing on my sleep, focusing on my hydration? What about those things? What about nailing down some of the basics and not chasing my tail around, trying to search for the grass is greener? And that's how I continue to progress. But on that note, let's talk about number four, planning. You must plan to succeed and you must look back at other events or races or training that perhaps didn't go well and maybe didn't lead to success. And why? Why not? What could you change to help those results in future? Are you even paying attention to these things? Are you even looking at it? If you do not plan to succeed, how can you possibly get it right? And I mean daily planning. What is the plan today? I'm gonna to run easy today so that I recover amazingly. I'm gonna have an Epsom bath when I get home to help my body recovery. That's a daily plan. Don't make a mess of it, don't run too hard, and don't skip the Epsom bath. What about your week plan? What is it you're working on this week? What do you want to move forward this week? Have you ever done a daily plan or a week plan? What about monthly or yearly? Do you have a heat map for your year? You know, if your big race is in September, and you're working your ass off in January, can you hold that until September? You need a heat map. You need a map that says, yes, we're training, yes, we're disciplined, yes, things are building nicely, but I know which months are really, really important for my big goal, August, July, June, and so as the training comes down to January, your heat map doesn't need to be as hot. You don't need to be as aggressive. Cover the basics really well, keep the psychology in a good place. Don't get injured in January, pushing for a big goal in September. You need to start to look at these things. You need to start ticking boxes, figuring out what's working for me, what's not, what do I need to swap, what do I need to do a better job of, and you do that by planning and then review. Plan and review, plan and review. Get on top of it, it's gonna be massive for your performances. Today's fifth and final tip, and this might be one of the most important, if not the most important. I've been so lucky to train with some of the best athletes in the world, Mo Farah, double Olympic champion. Anytime I speak to Mo, anytime he calls me or speaks to me, he doesn't ask, what's your mileage at? He doesn't ask, what was the speed of your last tempo run? He says, are you still in the gym? Are you still doing your gym work? He drilled it into me how important strength in gym work is. It keeps you healthy, but it also fixes some of those imbalances within the body that's gonna help you be more efficient, which will get you to the finish line faster, putting in less work. Improve your efficiency, you're faster putting in less work. How amazing is that? The other thing it does is it helps the consistency of training by decreasing the injury risk, but it also allows you to train at a higher intensity. So at the moment, if you don't do gym and you go train and it beats your muscles up and you have to take a few easy days because the muscles are beat up 
And sometimes you look at these pros and you're like, I don't know how to do it. It's because we are working on some of those muscles that we know in our bodies break down, strengthening them, which means that they recover quicker and we can go push again. We can do more reps, we can do more intervals, we can do more of the stuff that helps the body move forward. I don't have time in this video to tell you what to do in the gym, but like with the foam rolling and self-massage, if you go to joggingroom.com, I added a link in the description and that has home gym, a full routine for free. I'm not charging for this, I want you to get better. Have a look at it, start to add in some gym stuff, but be smart with it. Where does my body break down? What areas of my body do I need to help? When you finish a run, a long run, a hard session, what part of your body is talking to you? Start to include this stuff. I really wanted today to be five tips in five minutes. And I apologize that somehow I just get stuck in and talk, but I hope you listen. I really do. I hope you start to add some of this and I really hope your results improve. Check out the joggingroom.com stuff. There's also the master class if you want more nutrition, recovery, psychology, strength conditioning, running, everything you could possibly think of. 60 lectures, 12 hours of tips. Check that out. Please like, subscribe, comment below. Do you think some of these tips are gonna be helpful? I'm also looking at my <laughs> mic cable and I really hope that this was plugged in. <laughs> I'll be so sad, but have a lovely day. Give me some love. Take care.